developing in Mauritius is, um, is an option to, to some, to most. Um, and what we're really looking for when we unpack this particular um, topic, sorry, there's a little panel, a little poll that came up. If you could answer the polls, that would be fantastic. Um, if you remember for our panelists, just click it off out of your screen. So when we looked at uh, developing in Mauritius, we had to understand the nature of the development, what the rules and regulations are that guide uh, co-development or operators to operate, in develop, uh, to operate in Mauritius. And we identified two parties that play a huge role in what's happening in the landscape. Joel, who's from the larger organization of Nova Terra, but particularly around Beauplan Mauritius, which is the development that we're gonna be discussing today. Um, Nova Teller, Teller and uh, Joel will tell you more about it, but Nova Teller is one of the largest development organizations, the la largest land owners within the country, and, um, and the Bow Plan development is a magnificent development with lots of opportunities from retail, commercial, residential. So I hope you look forward to hearing that. Um, second two that we needed to look at, if you are a developer or business moving into Mauritius, um, there will be legal requirements, uh, whether it's from a visa, an immigration uh, investment, to what is the legal processes within uh, the process for you as a developer or business owner. Um, it was important that we included a sort of uh, a third party who um, had no invested interest in the development so that they could come to you as a, uh, without, uh, without any other uh, invested interest. So um, ENS Africa is the company that we identified and Terry today will obviously tell you more about their offering. So ENS Africa has been rooted in the history of Mauritius since 1820. It's, uh, it's well known, it is uh, actively involved in many conglomerates that are residential, commercial. Um, it works with all the major banks. They're obviously a, a, law, um, a law firm, so they come with um, teams of experts that understand both how the laws work within Mauritius, but then also you for a South African having to emigrate across. They've definitely pioneered when it comes to property development within Mauritius, and uh, they are also the market leader in property, project financing, MA and structural um, corporate governance, commercial law and intellectual properties. So um, we are really in good hands today when we look at our two experts. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us, and thank you to your teams that have put their time aside in the back end. I think, Joel, let's, let's talk about the meat. Let's talk about the development today. We're very excited to hear what these opportunities are. I've had a number of phone calls this morning. I hope Sue's here and she's uh, in the back end somewhere. So let me hand over the reins to you, Joel. Thanks a lot, Louise. Uh, great to be here today. And thanks for Estate Living for organizing this webinar and for having us on board. Uh, welcome to all the guests who have signed in to, to join us today on this uh, what I feel would be an exciting presentation. It's great to present today what we feel are exciting opportunities for foreign developers in Mauritius within our project. But first, a few words about who we are. Uh, I head the sales and marketing department for Nova Terra. Nova Terra is the real estate arm of the Terra Group. Terra is one of the largest conglomerates on the island, which was founded back in uh, 183 years ago already started in sugar production and has since diversified. Uh, today, the group is involved in still in sugar production. Uh, it's a large part of what the group does, but also in energy production, in retail, as well as having investments in a wide variety of activities uh, on the island. Coming back to Novatera, uh, our mission is to develop the large land bank that the group owns in the north of Mauritius. The group owns some 6,700 hectares of land in the north of Mauritius, the vast majority of which is under cultivation of sugarcane today. But the intention is to take a small part of that land bank and develop it into real estate projects. Now, since its creation back in 2017, Nova Terra, um, our main focus has been on the development of a smart city of Beauplan, even though we have projects outside the realms of a smart city. So since what we're here to talk about today is predominantly the smart city and the opportunities that will exist inside the project, what I propose is that we move to a short video 
that will give us a glimpse into the project. Mauritius, a tropical island like no other, steeped in history and culture, a dynamic business hub with direct connectivity to Europe, Asia, and Africa. In the north of the island, an exciting new concept is born. Beau Plan. Just 15 minutes from Port Louis, the capital and business hub, Beau Plan is perfectly located. A perfect blend of nature and urban life, old and new. A destination for creativity. In a carefully planned development, with direct access to Balaclava Beach. An invitation to go and create your lifestyle in a natural, authentic, and dynamic city. Go and create your future. At Beauplan, we build tomorrow, today. Go and create your workplace at the heart of a lively and uplifting city. Go play. The smart city of Beauplan is a playground for young and old. Go create. Thrive in an artistic hub where creative minds come together to create new ideas that will shape tomorrow. Beauplan, go up, go create your lifestyle. Quite amazing, Joe. Thanks a lot. No, so I hope that this this short video will have given you a glimpse of the project as a whole. What we're going to do now is we're going to move to a presentation where I'm going to go into a bit more detail about the planification and and what uh, what the the smart city is about really and how it's structured and why um, it's it it really is a vision over a long term that gives incredible security to investors. Let's move to the next slide, uh, please. So that's the master plan of the smart city. The first thing that's important to note in a smart city project, in a project like this, is the notion of control. Uh, the group owns all the land inside the perimeter of the smart city, but also most of the land around the perimeter. Hence, being able to guarantee an environment in time, which is incredibly important in real estate investment. The smart city itself spans over 228 hectares. The project is, uh, is framed by guidelines throughout the different zones to guarantee a, a lifestyle in time. Uh, there's a lot of anticipation that goes into a project like this. And, and really the design of the project on which we've been accompanied by a South African cabinet of urban design is critical because this is where you anticipate all the future needs of residents, transients, people that will live in the smart city to make sure that the, the environment remains qualitative in time 
when the traffic builds up and to really think about all the different problematics that can arise in a city in time. Over the course of a project, which we feel will run over about 15 years, we anticipate around 2,400 residential units, 250,000 square meters of office and commercial space, but also a lot of green spaces scattered throughout the project in all the different districts, and an environment which is fully walkable and cyclable. The objective of a, a project like this is to unite all the components of a, a fully-fledged city in, a, in an environment with easy access and to encourage light mobility. So in orange here, we've got the, the first two zones, which are the education zones. On the left-hand side of the screen, the zone EMI for tertiary education. Uh, we've already got in that zone uh, a university campus, and the idea in time is to welcome around 10,000 students in that zone. On the northern tip, is the zone uh, EMI for, for the school, where the school is already present. So that covers the, the education poles of a smart city. The next zone uh, in purple is the zone EMI for business. The idea is to create a, a, a new business hub in the north of Mauritius. Bearing in mind that today, uh, most of the business is done in Paul Louis, the capital, and also Eban, the financial district. There is no proper structured business zone in the north of Mauritius. And, and there we've really planned a fully fledged a business city and new business node in the north. It moves us to the heart of the project itself, which is articulated around the lake. Uh, around that lake is the zone CMR for leisure, as well as creativity and culture. We just completed in that zone and, and inaugurated in June this year. Uh, lakeside retail, 12,000 square meters of retail space right around the lake, set right around the lake. We've also got at the heart of the project a museum, uh, which is already existing, uh, and we're working on a strategy to really uh, capitalize on the traffic that we get from people um, in that zone and to add more cultural and creative activities uh, at the heart of the project to make it a destination for creativity and culture. Moves us to the final part, uh, the northern tip of the project, which is the zone earmark for the residential projects. Um, at the middle of that zone, there will be a big urban park, which is already here, which exists already. It's already an orchard today. And it's important to know that that zone has been a residential zone for many, many decades. This used to be the residential zone of a sugar factory of Beauplan. Uh, and therefore, we're talking about an environment which, which is really rich with mature trees uh, and a really qualitative environment. We're not talking about a greenfield project. And it adds, therefore, a lot of value to the proposition. Right. Um, since starting that project on that mission in 2017, uh, obviously, a large portion of the time was spent on the master planning. But then uh, it's important to highlight the fact that there's a lot of projects that have already, have already seen the day uh, across the different districts, starting on the cultural side with the museum, uh, which is already here and has been here for a long time. We normally welcome around 150 visitors annually at the museum. The business park, where the headquarter of the group is, where I'm sitting today, 6,000 square meters of offices, right at the heart of the project. The university, the African Leadership College, which can welcome 500 students in residential learning, which was opened in 2018. The school, Green Coast, as well as the nursery. The school has been operational since 2019. It's an English medium school offering the IB. The Riding Club, also unveiled in 2019 with 200 active members. Infrastructure, we invested massively in infrastructure uh, since the start of a, of a project. Um, more than $18 million have been invested in infrastructure at the heart of the project. Uh, the retail, Mahogany, 12,000 square meters of retail set right around the lake, uh, which was open in June this year. And then a number of projects of service plots, more than 100 service plots that were sold uh, to complete with the, the creative park where we've got today a host of creativity actors that are there, a jewelry craft center, dance studio, and so on. So already a, a, a lot of development has taken place in, in the few years since the project has started. 
In the coming two to three years, there's, there's a number of projects that will see the light of day, apartments uh, scheduled to be completed in 2022, lakeside offices, the Strand, uh, 2022 as well, a daycare clinic, which will be completed in the first half of 2023, the Media City, which will be uh, an African hub for the media industry, which will be completed in 2024, new phases of service plots, new phases of infrastructure, new sports activities, which will be completed by the end of next year, as well as the first phase of our business district. So as you can see, a lot of, of, of activity happening and a lot of investment into Beauplan already. Next slide, please. Now, why are we reaching out to developers today? The question might be why, since we seem to be doing not too bad at the moment with a lot of development happening, why are we reaching out to developers? What's important to note is that um, as much as we are structured to, to be able to develop ourselves, reaching out to developers means reaching out for expertise that we might not have. It's reaching out for people that have developed a reputation and a goodwill in South Africa uh, or elsewhere by developing their own projects that have developed a client base over the years um, and therefore have the ability to increase the pace of development within Beauplan. We are getting increased demand for, from South Africa, from South African buyers today. And we believe that it makes a lot of sense to welcome within Beauplan South African developers. Now, why should developers choose Beauplan? First of all, the credibility of a developer. I've touched on the group, which is a, a big group, financially healthy, and therefore the ability and the comfort to know that this group has the ability to bring to fruition the project and the vision in time. Location and accessibility, as we know, is critical in real estate. And today we are, we've got prime location, easily accessible from a business standpoint and from a residential standpoint. World-class infrastructure already in place with new phases of infrastructure planned as from next year. Long-term visibility and planning, that's, that's a key point in a smart city, is the ability to know how the project will develop over time. The support structure, Novatela can offer uh, the support with our land management teams and different teams to developers wishing to develop their business in Mauritius. The lifestyle and security that already exists in Beauplan. And finally, smart city benefits. Um, a developer coming to develop in a smart city in Mauritius will have the same benefits as uh, the master developer being ourselves, Novaterra. We're talking here about financial benefits, tax incentives, VAT, um, uh, exempt, being exempt from VAT in the case of residential projects, which, which all have massive impacts on the cost of development. I think it's important to also, um, uh, opposite that is to look at the demand. The demand for the residential market has been very resilient in Mauritius and very strong over the years, local, both from the local standpoint and from an international standpoint. The demand has remained strong despite the pandemic, with an average of around 300 units of residential sold every year and of a different scheme since 2012. Uh, since the, for the first six months of 2021, bearing in mind the, all the difficulties to travel, there's been more than $100 million worth of application process in the first six months of 2021 for residential properties in Mauritius. Now, the bulk of our buyers come from France, 44%. 20% from South Africa and 8% from the UK. Uh, hence, reaching out to South Africa is not uh, insignificant uh, because we believe that there's potential, more potential to grow the South African market um, and that therefore South African developers have probably a better understanding of what the South African buyers are looking for. Now, what are the opportunities for developers? The, the opportunities are, are numerous. Uh, there's the opportunity to acquire a plot of land to develop their own project, whether that project is a residential project, a commercial project. Um, there's really that opportunity to just acquire land and develop your own project. There's opportunities to co-develop with ourselves. Um, opportunity to bring operational expertise. Uh, as real estate developers ourselves, we, we're not necessarily involved in the operation. If I give you the example of a clinic, for example, that's not our area of expertise. 
And I believe that uh, there are people out there that have got expertise, operational expertise, whether it's on the medical side, on the retirement side, on the sports side, on the cultural side, that could be interested to develop those operations in Mauritius with a partner and within an environment like this. And then finally, the development of new activities, which might not exist already on the island, uh, and people that have got new ideas for activities and opportunities that they could develop. So I think a whole host of opportunities for developers. Uh, I forgot to mention the, the education side. We've already got one university, but the intention is to develop further the educative side of, the, of our project. So all in all, uh, a vast possibility of, of investment and, and uh, development opportunities for foreigners within Opla. Now, obviously, the, the, the bulk of the focus today has been on our smart city and Beauplan, but uh, I just wanted to end on a, on a picture of, of our land bank, which stretches all the way to the sea. That's a zone known as Balaklava in Mauritius, uh, which is only two and a half kilometers away from, uh, from our project, and where we've also got the intention of, of developing future projects, uh, including a golf estate. So just to end on, on, on that note, uh, and obviously, we would welcome uh, to engage uh, further with developers having an interest. Um, just before we move on, one last question. So, you know, if we think about property development, I know for South Africa, one of the most expensive purchases or a purchase that can affect the price of the overall unit is the cost of land. So uh, the price of the land within the bow plans scheme, how does it compare with perhaps other areas in Mauritius? Is it, is it on a competitive foot? Um, how does that land acquisition pricing well, look? That's a very good question, Louise. Um, because our project is a fairly new project, um, uh, we, are, we have not yet fully reaped the benefits of all the investment that we're putting in Beauplan. So I would say that now, more than ever, is the right time to invest in Beauplan. We're already seeing a, a rise in the land cost, uh, bearing in mind that uh, four years ago, uh, apart from the, the museum, there was very little that, that had been developed in Beauplan. And in the four years since we put together the strategy, uh, there's been a lot of development that took place and already we're seeing an impact on the land value, bearing in mind that this is what we are here to create. We're here to create value for the group. Um, so I would say that uh, today our land is, is still very competitive compared to other smart cities on the island. Um, and and uh, obviously our mission is, is for that land price to, to escalate uh, and to give uh, a, a good return on their investment to our future investors. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's keeping an eye on the time, let's uh, move forward to Terry. So uh, thank you very much, Joel. And there will be many, many questions that I think will be specific to each developer's needs and what you're looking for. Um, like I said, this is recorded, but also please feel free to ask the questions in the chat box or send us an email. We can connect you directly with Joel. For more uh, for more information thank you very much Louise. terry thank you for joining us today and um so terry head is the head of ens africa um in their mauritius office he's also a senior attorney so careful what you say well let's, let me be careful what i say um he is the current president of the mauritian law society and he's the first lawyer on the african content to be selected to become a member of the prestigious international association of defense council um, he specializes in corporate matters mergers acquisitions uh, co corporate structuring, which I think is important, financing in this case, which is obviously a question on many of our lips at the moment, capital markets, as well as complex commercial litigation and arbitration. But let me hand over to Terry. Terry, if you could um, give us a, a little bit of an idea of the requirements for a company or business that is looking to move to South Africa, move to Mauritius from South Africa, and look at these types of co-development operational opportunities that Beauplan offers. Thank you, Louise, and uh, thank you, Living Estate, to giving me this opportunity to to address uh, in this webinar. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, hello. Um, as you will. Notice from my accent, I'm Mauritian. I'm a eighth generation Mauritian. And uh, so I apologize if 
my English is a little bit French, which uh, <laughs> is the hybrid system of Mauritius. Um, if a law in Mauritius, this is very, very important for you to understand. The law in Mauritius is a hybrid system. We have both uh, English-based uh, law and French uh, heritage uh, civil law. Uh, our Companies Act, which was uh, introduced in 2000, and, uh, 2000, is borrowed from the 1993 New Zealand Act. So it's a, it's a, it's a Commonwealth uh, legal system, uh, uh, corporate law, and uh, South Africa, and very close to what is in South Africa, because your Companies Act was introduced a few years after us. Um, but this uh, Companies Act has to be looked at with all the other civil uh, laws applicable in Mauritius, which is the Mauritius Civil Code, uh, Code de Commerce, and Code of Procedure. Now, the, all that concerns property law is civil law. All that concerns contractual law is civil law. So it's a mix and blend of civil and uh, English, UK, or uh, Commonwealth uh, system of law. So but for you in, to come to Mauritius and start developing and investing in Mauritius, uh, you need to understand that there are numerous uh, different structures which you can use. We have a series of different types of vehicles, ranging from the private company, the public company, cellular companies, companies limited by guarantee. On top of all that, you add specific licensed companies like GBL1 companies. Now it's no longer GBL1, it's global business companies. Uh, you have specialized vehicles, you have on the, on the civil code, you have partnerships, which we call Société, and you have a multitude of numbers of types of Société, so that the, the vehicle you're going to use in Mauritius it has a wide spectrum of choice. And obviously, you can decide to come and invest into Mauritius either directly, with either uh, you're going to do it yourself, or in a joint venture with a partner in Mauritius. And you can do it directly, or you, you can set up your own vehicle, your private vehicle, to do the joint venture in Mauritius, to do the joint venture with the Mauritian partner. Now, in your, what we see a lot, what is happening is that uh, a lot of South African enterprises uh, in all sectors of, of the economy, are using Mauritius for the, as a platform for the investment across Africa. So if you are um, uh, uh, wishing to use Mauritius not only for a specific project, uh, an investment for a specific project in Mauritius, but it will be also forming part of your development outside of South Africa, and so Mauritius will be the hub in which you are going to house your international or African expansion. This also has a structuring element to it. This structuring element, you will need to consider a number of factors. And very often what I notice is that developers and investors coming from South Africa are concentrating on the immediate issues they have, the starting point, and they don't concentrate on the medium and long term, which is as important the considerations you will have to, 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 to put into place, the, the capital gains you are going to do, the investments you are you going to do, the uh, dividend repatriation, all sorts of long term uh, elements that you need to understand and master well when you are going to structure in Mauritius. Now, coming into a development of property in Mauritius, uh, property by itself is a whole spectrum of law, and you will, uh, which have different regulatory issues, 
if you are going to buy the land, then uh, they might be, it depends where you are buying the land. And if you are buying the land, let's say in a smart city like the, the, the Beauplan smart city, there are special regulations for that, special exemptions for that type of investment, which are not applicable which you are buying property outside a smart city or outside a, a specific scheme. For example, you would need prime minister's approval, uh, which is already catered for by uh, if you are if you are uh, in a in a scheme which provides that this is exempted. You have very very important land transfer tax and registration duty, which are proportional. If you are not in a scheme which provides for specific uh, tax and registration duty. So there are a number of parameters you need to consider when you are going to do in which property you are going to invest, where you are going to invest, and so on. On the operation side, there are a number of issues you need to understand and to master. One of them is insurance. The whole insurance industry and the law is civil code. It's different from what we have in South Africa. It's, uh, there are mandatory clauses that you cannot uh, contract uh, uh, outside. So you need to take factor insurance into your uh, planning. Intellectual property is also very, very important. You need to protect your brand, your know-how, how your, all your intellectual property, there are uh, extensive laws here. We are uh, very well advanced in, in intellectual property. This is something you have to, 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 to uh, think about at the very outset of your planning to come to Mauritius. Regulations and licenses, obviously. Uh, any project has a number of licenses and uh, regulations, which you need to be aware of. Employment and labor law, uh, you will most probably be employing people. Um, there again, there are uh, mandatory laws which are uh, specific to Mauritius, which you need to take into account and factor in. And when you are dealing with property, Obviously, there are a number of environmental laws which will range from water, rivers, boreholes, uh, pollution, traffic, and, 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 and etc. So all this will depend. And when you are investing into a smart city, all these factors, many of them are already catered for, which is a very important element. On the finance side, there are there is what well, I used to say one of the fundamentals is the flow of funds. You need to have a clear plan of how the funds are going to flow into Mauritius and out of Mauritius. This is fundamental to your project. Um, there is no uh, capital requirement when you are investing. You can set up a company with a minimalist uh, amount of capital. But as you know, nowadays, fin capitalization, fin capitalization is something which is not very popular with banks, regulators, and uh, the market. It's, it's always dangerous to have a fin capitalization company because uh, of the liability that goes with it uh, for directors, uh, and uh, it may have your limited liability um, being uh, attacked. So uh, flow of funds, dividend policy. This is something very important that we have to decide from the outset of how this is going to be done. If your joint venture is with a partner in Mauritius, uh, you will have to look at all the corporate structures, the joint ventures agreements, which are uh, the joint venture agreement very often governed by the civil code, uh, the corporate the minimum amount of directors, the boards, the reserve matters that goes to the 
reserved to the shareholders, the majority decisions you are going to take, and all the structuring of, of your internal governance. If you are going to have your project for a, as an as a investment hub for your African expansion, then you need to look at the flow of funds, the corporate structures, the, the, the um, uh, directorship, etc., in the light of your different uh, structuring across Africa. Um, and this is very important because Mauritius has very, very interesting laws regarding restructuring. As I said, you, you don't look only at the beginning of a project. You need to look at the project halfway through it or in the long term. And there, you need, it's, it's bound to happen that you will need some restructuring. Mauritius has extraordinary restructuring laws, ease of doing business, all this is easy. Uh, you need to look at your subsection planning if you are going to put in your family business in Mauritius or invest individually. So uh, it, 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 it tackles onto your, to your succession planning. There is no capital gains tax in Mauritius. So when you are going to, if you are putting subsidiaries underneath, when you sell and you do a lot of profit, hopefully, when you sell your, your subsidiary, over all that, you have no tax implications. So that when you are, for example, structuring not only in Mauritius, but outside of Mauritius, the, the, the capital gains become something which is extremely important. The double tax treaties that are signed by Mauritius, where all your uh, investments and tax implications, obviously tax is an important element uh, for you when you are planning your, your investment into Mauritius. And um, what we need to do, and I believe it's uh, the, the key of a successful investment in Mauritius, is to have partners of trust. You need to be able to have people where you can have confidence in, who, who are there uh, and who will be there uh, for a long, long time. And this is where ENS can bring its experience and its know-how, and, uh, and especially for South Africa, because we are a fully integrated law firm here. We are fully integrated with the South African ENS. Uh, ENS uh, is the largest law firm on the continent. We have some 600 lawyers across the continent. In Mauritius, we provide specialized areas of practice uh, in every sphere of the, uh, of the economy, uh, ranging from intellectual property uh, right up to corporate, structuring, banking. Um, uh, we provide for uh, company secretaries, for directorships, for head office services. We, we provide for, um, we have a full litigation team, a full employment team. Um, so we, have a full, uh, we can tackle your immigration uh, requirements. Um, and, and in fact, uh, the, whole, the whole idea is that we can service everything you need on the legal side from cradle to grave. So um, this is what uh, makes us, like I say, a differentiator with the, 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 the other lawyers in Mauritius. We are a little bit older than Bopla, since we are in five days' time, we are celebrating our 201 anniversary. So uh, a, a, a little 20 years before you, Joel. Um, we, we have been here and we will be here. Uh, so uh, we are in the long term. Uh, relationship. Uh, this is in our DNA, and uh, we would be very, very uh, pleased to accompany you uh, into your investment in Mauritius. Just to sum up, um, when you are planning to go out of your jurisdiction, whether it's in Mauritius or outside of Mauritius, what you need to do is to bear certain risks that you need to look at. You have the corporate structure risk, which I've talked to you about, the regulatory risk, 
the finance and exchange rate risks. You have to assess the country's capacity of providing funding of prov and, and of the exchange control. If there is, and Mauritius, there is none. The tax risks, very important, the litigation and dispute resolution risk. People don't think about it, but this happens, unfortunately. And this is where you need to have a robust system in a country. And uh, using Mauritius, for example, to in, when you are going across Africa, you are removing the litigation risk from certain countries and putting that in Mauritius. Ex ex the same for exchange risk. The restructuring risk, as I said, is very, very important. Employment law risks, environmental, and particular risks such as intellectual property insurance competition. Obviously, competition, as you know, Mauritius forms part of COMESA and SADEC. And uh, so that, uh, like uh, with South Africa, uh, the, 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 the market share that you have is not only calculated in a particular country, but overall into Africa as well, into the different countries. So um, I'm very happy to answer your questions. Uh, it, it's, it's a very, very high level presentation. Each one of those topics can be discussed in depth. Uh, and very pleased to, to, to do this with you, uh, the occasion arising. Thank you very much, Terry. Thank you. And uh, yes, uh, each one of those those questions, those areas could definitely be broken down a lot further. Um, unfortunately, on a, in an environment like this, we, we have an allotted time uh, uh, with individuals. And again, if you would like to take this conversation offline with Terry, uh, please feel free to, to contact us or um, uh, or, uh, and we will definitely connect you. Um, as we come towards the end of this, I think there is one question that has come up in almost all of the communication that I've received. And Joel, this is really looking at you financing. So if you are interested in, in, uh, in working, and maybe this question is for both Terry and Joel, financing. <laughs> if you are interested in uh, at a co-development or operational opportunity at Beauplan or at one of Nova Terrace's other projects, how does the financing model work? Um, I'm a South, and we'll take this, I'm a South African developer. I have current assets in Africa, South Africa, which I'm either in the process of developing or I'm close to exiting those projects. And I'm looking to move my business into a safer environment with a larger kind of market um, to a certain extent or an open market. How would I approach the financing aspect? Well, Louise, it will, um, the, there are many opportunities of, of financing uh, and it will really depend on the, on the type of activity and the type of, 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 of investment that you're looking to make. Uh, in fact, I, I believe Thierry is in probably more able than I am to, to answer that question uh, because the, the, the opportunities for financing are wide ranging, but uh, will very much depend on the type of structure that you're looking to implement and the type of activities that you're looking to put in place. Thierry, maybe you can, you've got yeah, more yeah, the, Definitely, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very wide ranging. Uh, as you may as you may guess, uh, so we we we're very very happy to offline take take the question and and look at the specifics. Um, Mauritius is is a finance hub. Uh, you, you must understand that, and we have uh, we are lucky to have uh, a, a dual system, uh, English and French. So you will have it's so many tools uh, uh, to to look at and to to, to benefit from. Um, bank, it's a banker's paradise uh, when you look at it for, to, to be able to structure financing. Uh, that, that was one of the angles that uh, we, we were able to launch the financial services uh, sector at the, uh, since 1992. Uh, the, the, the ease of having financing in Mauritius is, is, is uh, how would I say, we are, we are worldwide competition on, on, on that. Okay, so as a South African uh, who might not necessarily have a track record um, in Mauritius, so this project would be my first project that I'm doing for the first time, I, I would not have an, it. well, obviously depending you, on my you, you will, personal history, but I yeah, should have yeah, No, but you will, you will need, what, what is very important is the, the, the need to have your KYC documents. Uh, you, you need to be able to satisfy your source of funds, 
uh, because the AML CFT regulations of in Mauritius are very, very strict. Um, Mauritius uh, looks at it very closely, but that's the normal KYC documents that you give to your bank in South Africa, uh, because we have quasi the same laws of AML and CFT in Mauritius. So financial institutes would be open to uh, it, to supporting a, a, oh, yeah. a land acquisition or a project a oh, acquisition yes. within yes. land. Yes. Okay. All right, folks, um, that brings us to the end. And I think I think definitely the, the finer questions, and there I'm sure many of them need to be discussed in a, a more intimate environment with, um, with our colleagues and our panelists. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I think this has given us a great overview of understanding what the project entails, the opportunities within, and then what you have to look like from a business perspective. And then and it's good to know that there are financing opportunities uh, for for younger, newer developers coming into the scene, which is a challenge here in South Africa. Um, this is recorded. We will share the recording uh, with everyone. And uh, thank you again, gentlemen. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts. And thank you to the team working behind the scenes. We can really see those questions and answers coming in. And, and that is a fantastic support to this webinar. Um, to our attendees and those registered, enjoy the rest of your morning. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again on another um, Insight Expert uh, series. Mm -hmm.